I just want to start off apologizing for not uploading a video in quite some time. I've been very busy recently, but I will try to get back on schedule and upload at least a video a week again. But back on topic, today I want to go over another very important type of dividend stock, and that's REITs. There are many different types of REITs out there, but we'll be breaking them down into different categories. The first one I'll be looking at today is residential REITs, which tend to focus primarily on rental apartment buildings. First, as a disclaimer, I just want to say I'm not a financial advisor, so please do your own due diligence before investing. I'll be taking like 7 residential REITs today. Of course, if there's one that I missed that you would like me to take a look at, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll make sure to include it in a future update. First off, when looking at some basic information, I noticed that debt levels at Boardwalk, Northview, and Morgard is higher than their market cap. Also, you might notice that Pure Multifamily REIT currently has a payout ratio of over 100%. Even in the past, they had a payout ratio of slightly over 100% or very close to it. I'm not a fan of such a high payout ratio. They either have to increase their profits or cut their dividends as this is not sustainable. We had a similar situation with Boardwalk last year where they cut their dividends by more than half. I also want to note that the dividend growth from these REITs are not very high. We'll see that later on when we take a look at their dividends. So wherever the dividend yield you purchase at, you will most likely be stuck with around that yield as it grows very slowly. But on a positive note, they do pay monthly, which is really nice. When we take a look at the revenue, overall the trend is upwards, except for a hiccup we see in Boardwalk. But one thing you may notice is that many of them do have big jumps in revenue, and that's probably due to them acquiring new apartment units. Another thing I want to point out is that Pure Multifamily, the one in orange, is growing the revenues the fastest compared to the rest, followed by Interrent, which is probably why there is an extra premium to their stock price. Looking at their funds from operation, we see a much bigger drop in profits from Boardwalk during the same period where the revenue dropped. But looking at their growth again, Pure Multifamily and Interrent ranks at the top with the highest growth. But Canadian Apartment has also been growing very quickly as well compared to the rest. And for being the largest among them, it's much more impressive. First off, when we take a look at their dividends, you will notice a lot of spikes in Boardwalk's dividend payment. But that's because they've done three special dividend payments. And in fact, they have only cut their dividends once, and that was in 2018, and it was a big dividend cut. If we remove out the special dividends out of the picture, it would look a lot cleaner and nicer, but that big dividend cut last year really hurts. But overall, none of the other companies have cut their dividends, but you will notice that the dividend growth is very small. It's pretty much flat. When we take a look at their dividend growth, the first thing you will notice is a big drop in Boardwalk's dividend growth. If we factor out the special dividends, it doesn't make it look any nicer, except that it smooths out the curve better. And if we zoom in, we see exactly what we'd expect, very low dividend growth at around 2%, which is what I would expect. My reason why I was expecting around 2% is because that's what I expect inflation to be around. And with inflation around 2%, I would expect yearly rent increases to be around the same level. If we take a look at the profit margins, based on their funds from operations, they're all hovering at around a similar level. If we zoom in some more, beyond the outliers, we can see a clearer picture, and they're all hovering at around 30%. When looking at their stock performance, there are two that are lagging behind, and that's Boardwalk and Northview Apartments. Boardwalk, I'm not surprised because of their performance has been very poor in the past 5 years, with a recent drop in revenue and cash flow. Northview Apartments, on the other hand, has been growing their revenue and cash flow, so it looks good on that front. But when you take a look at their dividends, it's barely gone up. When your revenues and profits has been increasing so much, why can't they afford to increase their dividends? I think the reason why is because they've been taking on a lot of debt and issuing a lot of new shares because their earnings per share has barely gone up, so they can't afford to increase their dividends. When we take a look at their annualized return, we see that Boardwalk and Northview at the bottom, which is what we would expect. Canadian Apartment has been pretty steady and has produced very consistent returns, and most of the other ones are still pretty new without too much history. So in my personal opinion, which one do I like? Let's start off by eliminating the ones I don't like. The first one is Morgard, as they have a massive amount of debt. They probably took on the route of taking on more debt instead of raising money by selling shares, but with that kind of debt, it's scary compared to the rest. The second one is Pure Multifamily. It's one that's been growing very quickly, but we can tell it's at the cost of issuing more shares as the fund from operation per share hasn't been growing, and on top of that, their pay ratio is just too high at over 100%. The next couple, I'm only providing my own personal opinion. One reason why I also look at historical data instead of just looking at the current data is because you can see a lot about the company's growth. One example of that is Northview because if you take a look at the current numbers, 
no doubt in my mind, it would rank near the top and one that I would like to own because they do have the highest yield at just under 6% with a payout ratio of just under 80% which is fantastic compared to the rest. But when you look at the previous years, the company is taking on a lot of debt and they haven't been able to grow their funds from operations per share in the past decade. No, I said per share because their funds from operations has been growing but not their funds from operations per share. It's been averaged at around 220 per share for the past decade, hence why there hasn't been any dividend growth either. So I wouldn't expect them to grow the dividend going forward, but of course that is the past. And what's going to happen in the future, we don't know. Because they may change, but I wouldn't go in with the expectation that they will be changing if you do plan on purchasing it, as long as you're satisfied with their current yield. But for me, I want to see growth as well. Interrent has the best dividend growth among them and one of the ones that have been growing the fastest. Overall, it looks great, except that it's the most expensive one and I find it just too expensive for me. If you can get on a decent pullback, it could be a good investment. Boardwalk is an interesting one, why you must be wondering, especially after they just cut their dividends. It's because they just cut their dividends, their stock price got punished for it and now their payout ratio is much lower at around 50%. So they can raise it much more in the future, back up to around 70%. If they did pay out around 70% of their earnings back, their yield would be around 3.6%, which is a lot more attractive. But of course, they are experiencing problems, which is why they had to cut their dividends. And on top of that, they do have a lot of debt, so there is more risk there. But of course, the greater the risk, the greater the reward. I do think that Canadian apartment is the best of the breed. It is the largest among them and the most consistent, which is definitely a positive in my books. But you are paying a premium for it, so I would probably only purchase it during a pullback. Because when you take a look at their dividend yield at 2.8%, it's nothing amazing and the dividend growth is very low at around 3% annually. So the numbers itself just doesn't look very compelling. But don't get me wrong because most of the other companies are just around the same with very low dividend growth. So if I'm purchasing one of these companies in this field, I would definitely put a big focus on your starting dividend yield because you just can't expect them to really grow it significantly long term. And Killam is another one that looks good too, slightly higher yield than Canadian Apartment with okay growth and similar dividend growth to Canadian Apartment. And it's about a quarter of the size of Canadian Apartment, but I would wait for a pullback as well. So overall, my top three picks would be Canadian Apartment, Killam, and Interrent. And I will probably wait for a pullback before purchasing. Internet, we need a much greater pullback for it to seem interesting to me as it's just too expensive to me. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and share the video. I really appreciate it because making these videos takes a lot of time to do the research on these companies and really helps out the channel. And hopefully we can reach more people and help them make better financial investments. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to smash the subscribe button. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.